Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Not Yet Millionaires. This is the 10th episode. Number 10. And in this episode, we will be diving deep into the details of our experiences at the Wharton Global Youth Investment Competition. Mm. So starting off, Zion, could you please explain to our viewers what the competition is about? Yeah, so the Wharton Global Youth Competition is a competition hosted by Wharton where uh, they invite 5,000 teams over the globe to participate in this investment portfolio building competition. Uh, so we were given a client and a bunch of stocks. Um, and from those stocks, we had to pick those stocks and build a personal portfolio for our client. So that was kind of just a rough basis of what we did. Yeah. And so when we first started off with the competition, there was a case study that Wharton gave us. And in that case study, it was like basically all about our client and like what we needed to do, like his financial goals and whatnot. And so first off, so we, all of us, we first read about our client with his name is Peter. And we learned that he has a company where he's like, he does like service projects. Yeah. Like, like, like for the environment, yeah, like, for the environment, yeah, it's like, green energy recycling. Yeah, it was Basically. like something about plastics or whatever. I kind of forgot because it was a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. This is like a month yeah. ago. So, But yeah, basically we had to learn everything we knew about Peter. Mm. And we learned that Peter was very environmental for, uh, environmental aware. And he wanted to like better the environment. And he is, and from that we could like derive that he was like a really like honest and person that values mm -hmm. like integrity and like things like that. Yeah, adding to that. So Wharton didn't didn't give us much information about Peter on the case study. Yeah. So we decided to individually do our own research on him and try to figure, like, figure out more. So we kind of like went on our social media to try to like check things out, like more like a social research on his actual personality and his companies that he co-founded. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, we did a lot of research based on like his social medias and like his online prevent presence by mm -hmm. going to like LinkedIn, his online profiles, like articles about him, his company, mm. what he's interested in, yeah. and then like his company website and other companies that are like affiliated with him and his company that might be in partnerships or just like that know about him and whatnot and everything. Yeah. And it was really interesting because we learned a lot about environmental studies and mm. also like Peter as a person, right. but I thought it was really interesting. Do you, do you guys remember his company name? It was... It was like... Uh... Maybe not. I can switch it over right now, actually. Okay. But, yeah. But, basically, like, uh, we were able to... And, like, f after learning all we could about Peter, we realized that, like, um, this, our, like, investment portfolio cannot just be built for Peter just so to, like, make money for him. Mm. We also have to build it around his values and principles. Right. So, like, he would actually like investing with yeah. us yeah one of the things that i remember like really distinctly about that was i remember we were trying to find stocks that give good dividend returns and we found this super good oil company that had you know good price had a good I think it was okay like a, okay yeah. yeah it was okay was oil, and that was and it had a really good like price on the stock it had good Dividends dividend returns and all and, that but and then good, a good dividend history too yeah they, yeah they really kept, good they kept they kept keeping time. it up and so but once we realized that what like you're gonna say we need to do something that he'd like investing with us, we decided not to invest in OKE because he's so environmentally friendly mm. that investing in an oil company like that would go like almost against, against his, his morals because right. like a lot of like environmental companies and environmental people don't like oil companies mm -hmm. because of all the like the negative stuff that oil mining does right. or oil yeah. digging does to the um, economy and so I, f I feel like that was really interesting because like the even though it was a good company to invest in it wasn't a good in company to invest in for peter specifically right. due to his morals and his goals mm -hmm. and whatnot yeah, which i thought was really interesting yeah. and also like oil and stuff like the cars use oil and like it, it like mm -hmm. pollutes the environment. Our environment and stuff and like pollutes the air but peter's company is called repurpose <laughs> and his company okay. is just a large plastic action coalition which basically means like he just like uh gathers plastic he removes plastic okay. removes plastic from like the oceans Got you. and like yeah just like doesn't he recycle like it that. i'm not honestly i'm not sure what he does with it <laughs> yeah but, but they basically all they do uh i repurpose is just 
they're trying to combat the pollution crisis right. around the world. Okay. And so, yeah, we, so we, we recognize that Peter was the founder of this company, which means that he really cares about the environment. So we needed to pick companies that also care about the environment right. Right. Yeah. and are like taking action to better mm-hmm. our environment. Yeah. And obviously they're not like making the environment worse. Yeah, one of the one of the things that I remember about that was we would go and we'd and we'd look up like I remember when I was doing research for some of the companies I literally looked up like Costco environmentally friendly acts or whatever mm-hmm. and it would have news stories and like public articles about like Costco invests you know five million dollars into this economically friendly gasoline or something like that and so I feel like it was really interesting learning about all these different companies that we wanted to invest in mm-hmm. learn about their like goals when it comes to like economy friendly, mm. like okay, like, like working towards that. And I thought yeah. that was really cool. Cool, yeah. If I could add something to that, so when we were like learning all about this uh, words in investment competition, there was a key term. I think it was, oh yeah, it was impact investing, um, mm. and that's where you, yeah, basically what we've been saying up to now, just like investing in a company that impacts the environment for like in better. like a like, positive way or no not even the environment just impacts something that like you care about you yeah know, per, right. like so yeah so oh, Im- impact yeah. investing was something that was really like important to pete like peter that we found um which we kind of like strategized around yeah so yeah yeah also <clears throat> i just would like to note that i think you guys might be a little confused but every teams around the world every team's like a uh, role and purpose for Peter is Peter like is trying to hire a team of like investment uh investment consultants basically yeah investment consultants and like mm-hmm. portfolio builders and he wants a- each team to build a portfolio for him and he will choose which portfolio will be best for him and in the future he okay. probably like invest with them yeah, yeah. and stuff like that so we're basically his portfolio managers mm-hmm. we're basically acting as his prof- as his portfolio managers yeah and so the next thing uh, we did after we looked at Peter's values and uh, values and like principles and stuff on the case studies that we looked at his financial goals. And one of his financial goals is because he was an entrepreneur, his short term financial goal. Wait, so he had, yeah, he had a short term and a long term. Yeah, goals, right. right. He, okay. had, he had a short term goal, which was like five years and then a long term goal, which was 10 to 15 years. Mm-hmm. And so for his uh, short term goal, his goal was to basically build a fund so he could give maybe like a few thousand dollars to some sort of startup company that he likes. Pretty sure it's five thousand or five thousand dollars, like once a year. Yeah, once a year, he's gonna like look at like startup companies that he enjoys, that he like respects, and he's gonna invest in them. So he wanted us to build a portfolio that, like, that will make money for him pretty much. Like every year, he wants maybe. Oh yeah, he wants to like double his money. He wants to invest twenty percent of the. One hundred thousand dollars that we were given, into, he wants to dedicate yeah twenty percent of this into this fund, and he wants us to double that money in five years, so he is so he can which is an insane return yeah it's it's pretty good, he wants us to double that twenty percent which is twenty thousand dollars in five years so he can give a certain amount of money to whatever company that startup that he likes yeah. And that's that the going back to the OKE oil company that we were talking about, that's one of the reasons we chose or we were thinking about doing that one mm-hmm. is because the dividend return is really good for this 20% goal he was trying to hit. Because if we're gaining tw- like if we need 20% return, like to help and like double that money for these students, like the entrepreneurs he's giving his money to, we needed dividend stocks to benefit that. And so I think that was one of like the beneficial reasons for like some of some of the companies we chose, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and then uh, moving on to his long-term goal. His long-term goal was to build a wellness center and yoga center in the center of Miami, which is uh, was just going to be really expensive, obviously. Yeah, real estate. So real estate in, uh, in, by, in Miami, which is like a really populated yeah, yeah. city. So we need to find some way to make him a lot of money. And we, we, did, we did some research and we found out that like to buy a like a space for a yoga center in Miami is like a few like million dollars, a few million dollars. And he, yeah. So we basically just had to like come up with ideas of how to make that much money in 15 years. Yeah. So yeah. So it was kind of a, like a stretch, like 
obviously that return is like insane. So really our goal was just try to make him as much money we, as we could, but more focused on like, like our strategy to get him to that point. If, if I'm, am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Cause like, I'm pretty sure as what Reagan and like the case study was talking about, I think it was less like the judges for like this competition to see who moved on to semifinals and finals. It was more about your plan mm. of how to get there, less of how much money you actually, actually gained made. during the what like three month period they gave us to invest. Yeah. And so, which is why I think that like it's not about how good your stocks do necessarily, mm. but it's about your philosophy behind picking the stocks, your reasoning, and like how well you thought out okay. your stocks yeah. and your plan and your investment strategies. Oh yeah, so like actually they said they said that exactly on the Wharton website. The Wharton investment website, like the competition website, sorry. And it was basically just talked about like they didn't really care about how much return you make on their like little stock mm, simulator. Stock simulator. They don't really care about how much you make. Like that's that does not matter at all. What matters in the end is your final strategy okay, yeah. and compared to like the other teams. So like basically, however much money you made on the uh the stock simulator wouldn't really, wouldn't really matter. Wouldn't really okay. matter in the end. Yeah, which I think is nice because like, I know like a lot of people who like would want to participate in this competition, but they are like afraid or don't know how to like pick a stock or like how to read stock numbers. And like, if you think about it, that's like beneficial because then like this competition is teaching you to like think about it, not just act on it it's like teaching you the mindset of how to invest and not actually like being able to read the numbers and like breaking down like all like what like the number statements and all that kind of stuff and so i think that's really beneficial for like kids who aren't as like educated on stocks as long as they can think about like strategies then it's you know beneficial for them as well yeah which i thought was really cool and so the next part after that we like understood Peter and also the case study and his financial goals and s stuff is that we had to develop a strategy for him. So to first start off with that, we decided to look at the entire economy, the entire, the entire economy as a whole. So like it's, it's called macro economy research, right? Yeah. There's, there's micro and macro economy research, but yeah, we focus on like macro economy research, which is basically studying the past, like, Okay, it's like almost like the I'm gonna try to explain this like in my own words, which probably not like the exact definition, but it's like uh it's the economy as a whole. So mm -hmm. basically like seeing what's been happening the past few months and seeing if like we're going on a downturn or like a upturn like a like a recession. Recession. Or, yeah. I don't know what the other upwards. Yeah. <laughs> the economy's gain getting better per se. Yeah. So I mean after so yeah, after we did like a bunch of uh economy research we kind of just we figured out that like we could pretty much say that we were going in recession and like from a lot of there's a lot of resources out there that said that we are going into recession yeah um so we kind of just went with that and yeah if you want to and so that yeah with that we did we looked up like different like categories because there's like categories when it comes to stores like food like dread like retail or like marketing services or like there's all these different like sections of stores that your like company falls under. So we went through and we looked at what like categories of stores did good during recessions. So one was like what value items like dollar stores, like Dollar Tree, mm. Family Dollar, yeah, like consumer staples. Yeah, consumer staples or okay. food. And so we were finding companies that did good or like segments of companies that did good in recessions and from there we did research on what companies in those overall categories we wanted to invest in right and that i feel like taught me a lot about yeah. like the categories of because i never really thought of it like that like when i think of like stores i just think of stores as a whole i don't think of them as like different categories i guess mm -hmm. but i really like that because that made me think of it in a new like light per se yeah yeah so like some uh industries that we found that performed well during recessions was like consumer staples. Consu uh, which consumer staples is basically uh, yeah, exactly. things that consumers think are essential to like how they live. Mm. So like uh, stores like Walmart, Walmart Target probably, grocery uh, stores, like grocery yeah. stores and like food stores. Okay. 
And um, what, are some, what are some other sectors besides consumer staples? We have consumer discretionary, which is hmm. things that consumers don't consider essential, but it's like things the, that they want. Okay. Yeah. So like, does it include, include like food stores like Chipotle, like restaurants like Chipotle, McDonald's, um, like Subway, yeah, or... like clothing stores, things like that. And Ross. <laughs> Ross. We love Ross. Yeah, thanks. And another one, another sector was healthcare. Mm. Healthcare is, has always been important. Uh, it's like, always been like proof that it's like always it's it's always been like surviving. Sur- yeah. It's always survived the recession. Yeah, I remember yeah. another one of them was um sorry for cutting up. Another one of them was um public storage, like storage mm. facilities. That's real estate. Real estate, yeah. Part part of real estate, I okay. guess. Yeah. So mm. I thought that was really nice. So yeah, because uh, yeah, because these things like these industries like make sense like these uh, recession proof industries make sense because people during a recession people still need to care about their health and they still need to go to the hospital they need to pay hospital bills they so need health the staples care, yeah they need they, they need staples too like food um, water like clothes, water everything, yeah. yeah everything like that like uh, toothpaste stuff things like that. And consumer discretionary makes sense because people need food. They need to eat food, and they also need like clothes on their backs. So, and also real estate, cause where 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 people live, like they have to spend money on certain things, even when they're in a recession, when they're trying to save money. Yeah. So that's what we're that's what we were like looking for, like industries that still that still like perform the same basically. Even in a recession, even when people are trying to save money, they still need to do certain things. And yeah, that's what we were looking yeah, for. Yeah, because like on the contrary, when you think of like companies like like movie theaters or like theme parks, like when, yeah, exactly. like when we're in a deep recession, like, I, like less people are going to go and spend thousands of dollars going to Disneyland. Right. Or, you know, like I don't know, like money going to like movie theaters or like stuff like Top Golf or stuff like that where it's like... It's fun, right? When you have the money for it. But if you're in a recession and maybe you don't have a job or maybe, you know, you don't have enough money for like the things you actually need, like clothes, toothpaste, that's, those are the companies that would do bad in recession, for example. So I thought that was really interesting because like you could see like the difference between what's like important per se, like when it comes down to it and then what's less important when it comes to like sections of companies and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. And since there were four of us, uh, Wharton, uh, Wharton like required that each team had the same had the same amount of industries as as they had members. members right. So we had four team members. So we divided each of the and we have four team members. So we have four industries, obviously, and so we just divided all of the industries to each person. So I think I had information technology. Right. Well, I f- oh wait, no, I first started out with energy, but then we did, I think I switched to inf- information technology. You had, oh, yeah. you, what did you have? You had, uh, I think I had a consumer cons- discretionary, mm-hmm. consumer staples or consumer discretionary is like both of those. And I think Finn right. had real estate. That's right. And then our other team member, Kainoa, he had healthcare. Mm-hmm. And so would you like to talk about why we switched from energy into information technology? Let's see. Yeah, if I can remember correctly. Um, gosh, I can't remember. I, I think I can't remember, remember why. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we, we have, first we started with energy because we thought, oh, Peter's an environmental person. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's like some solar energy. Renewable energy. Renew, That's, re, like okay, renewable yeah. energy companies that like, Peter might like. like wind, and, water. Yeah, wind, sun. water, uh, okay. solar, and things like yeah. that. And so we just wanted to like see... But like after looking at the stocks, the stock picks in the energy sector that Wharton provided with us, there were only like oil companies and things like that. So we did we believed that uh, Peter didn't like that, and so we moved. So we started looking for other industries, and we we ended up with information technology, because even though information technology has like historically not proven so well uh, during recessions, but we thought that. Because recessions don't last more than a year, it lasts like um, like fifteen. Doesn't it last like under a year, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So we just thought that information it wouldn't like 
like damage anything if we chose information technology because information technology is also like super high growing industry and so we just decided to choose it for peter's 15 year plan mm. remember that right okay like Brett, Brett telling us that yeah, yeah. like <laughs> he looked at our like uh stock base and was like do recessions last 15 years <laughs> and we're like oh no <laughs> and then, yeah so yeah. we just choose oh so it's like we switched it to information technology because we still need some way to grow peter's money like okay yeah. to a million dollars in those 15 years and so uh, it was more of the long term then right? yeah it was um, okay. about the long term because the information technology has a bunch of uh has a bunch of companies that are growing very fast like amazon is still growing very fast uh apple is still growing very fast mm-hmm. And we had Cisco in the in the information technology industry, which is like a really stable company. Yeah. So. And even though like technology companies might not do, like they still do well, of course. But like even though if they might not do as well as other companies do in recessions, like as Raymond was saying, recessions don't last a full year all the time. And so, like one year out of that fifteen years, so the rest of the fourteen years, if you don't mm. have a recession, that's fourteen years of very good high profitable right. companies and so i thought i, I really like that when you're we investing about that yeah and even if a company like stock price falls during a recession then we, we the, it creates a buying opportunity so we can buy in those super low like, points this, like super quality super good quality companies and we can ride it all the way to the top and like for all of those 15 years just holding it and stuff and mm-hmm. so so I think another factor that we looked into. Oh, sorry, are you, are you done? Oh no, yeah, I'm done. Okay, so another factor we looked into was the ESG rating. Mm-hmm. Um, now presented another idea. Do you guys want to explain what that is? So the ESG rating is it, it's short for environmental social governance, and it basically is just like a evaluation, s- right? Yeah, it's like a score okay. for like public traded companies or even like small companies, I think. But it's a score for like. Uh, like companies that they get like scored and then the lower the score the better you are with your environmental okay. and social like Do awareness it's like yeah like companies who aren't like don't care about the environment don't care about like the social like they're just focused on like money and nothing else and, like they don't like they're not good like moral companies per se they would have a typically higher we have a higher they ESG. typically, typically yeah. have a higher ESG rating just because they might not do as much or care as much about environmental or social like like awareness or like you know things that affect yeah. those but like if you see companies like peter's company for example i bet he would have really like really a lower esg score just because of like i don't know whatever he does outside of job and like what his yeah. work does and like so i thought that was like interesting when it comes to esg rating because that's what i feel like that was really important yes especially for yes. someone like peter who cares about the environment a lot yeah, so like the first thing we did when we, uh, when we did research on our stocks, so like when we first did research in each of our own industries, was that we looked up their ESG scores, hmm. and if their ESG scores, uh, we looked at their ESG score, ESG scores, and then we compared it to their competitors and their peers at the same industry, and if they were like at the bottom, then we eliminated them, and we we wanted them mostly like near the top. They obviously didn't have to be like perfect, but we wanted it, them to be like pretty, like pretty good, decent, like yeah. pretty decent compared we, to the competitors. Yeah. We had like a like a benchmark. That yeah, we, we had like a hit. benchmark yeah, yeah. that we wanted like each company to hit, mm-hmm. and so the company didn't match our standards, then we just eliminated them because we just thought that Peter wouldn't want a company that yeah. it didn't have a good ESG score. Yeah, because that probably shows that they don't care as much about the environment, and we know yeah. Peter really, really cares about that, so he probably would take ESG rating into into account when investing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it took like many like hours of research just going down the Wharton list and like <laughs> looking up each ESG each, score for each company and like not eliminating, even that, but like eliminating, even, eliminating. Yeah, and even like their own individual like mission statements. Like right. when we, when we narrowed it down from the ESG readings, I remember we I did it was funny because we all had like our each own individual like documents section, yeah. Section and from that document we had all of our research on it and I remember we did like our we studied their mission statement like what they wanted to achieve what they've done in the past, kind of like where they were heading as a company. So 
Oh, and that brings up another point, qualitative and quantitative analysis. Yes. We forgot to cover that. So, uh, qualitative analysis is the qualities of a company, right? Yes, like okay. the qualities, like the, the things that you can't measure with numbers. Numbers, okay, right. And then quantitative is you can measure with numbers. So, that's like the PE rating and everything like that. Or, yeah, like their revenue, their okay. profit margins, the how much they make. Yeah. And, and qualitative is things like uh, like employees. I mean, uh, Things like, um, like, 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 um, like, just like leadership. Yeah, leadership management. That's H- yeah. HR. Like, yeah, things like, like that. Like, okay. like the people in the company. Like, yeah, that like still are just as important as numbers, mm-hmm. but can't be measured by numbers, such as like, like as their revenue and whatnot. And so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and and also like how they're acquiring their money and their capital. Like right. Yeah. Okay. Like from doing what? Like if it's safe and like like ethical practices. All right, yeah. That's just, yeah, and so after that, yeah. after we pick, after the after we narrowed down the companies from the big list of stocks, and after we like filtered it through like it's still recording. ESG ratings and stuff, we chose to do a DCF model on each of the companies. Like just a reminder, I think we I think we talked about this many times. Well, think, DCF yeah. is like discounted free cash flow model, and it basically just takes all of the companies uh, like all of a company's free cash flow from the past and then using a growth rate you grow their free cash flow in five years into the future then you discount it back at a required rate of return so basically how much your client like needs to make yeah to get to his financial goals so we like discounted it by his uh, required rate of return and we figured out the like the value of the company today. And just another like explanation, a free cash flow is the company, uh, is like the money that the company earns, but after they have paid off like everything, like their debts, their interest payments, their, their like, loans, yeah, their loans the lease, and after all of that, and free cash flow is the money that they can use to reinvest in themselves, to pay dividends, to buy, to invest in other companies, to invest in other things like stocks and whatnot. And so it's just thing, it's just the money left for the company to reinvest in themselves and just keep, or give it out to their yeah, shareholders. And keep, and keep growing the company, yeah. Yeah, so in, uh, uh, the free for the free cash flow is really important in valuation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and so we just did a DCF model for each of the companies that we chose. And we like set a, what's it called? the. After we did the, we found the fair value. We just, we just set like a target price, or whatever, for, for like us to buy in, and yeah, cool. Did we um, do anything else in our research that we to mention? Oh yeah, one more thing that we implemented in our portfolio was to have a certain percentage dedicated to cash, because we believe that. Because some of these companies, they were quite overvalued. And so we just decided that we have to keep a, like a percentage in cash. So, uh, oh yeah, the, like the percentage we kept in cash was like 73% or something. So we kept 70, 70, 73% of our portfolio in cash. So we could, so if a company falls below its intrinsic value, which is also which is a, a, like a bigger and smarter word, I guess, for its fair value, we would spend all of the money to like buy in those companies and taking up like the opportunity and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes more sense. Cool. Did we cover everything we wanted to? Yeah, I think so. Cool. I'd, I'd just like to add something, but it was cool. So we, at the, like close to the period where we had to like return in our final, like, we had two weeks until we had to turn in our final. We all came together, like comp- compiled the research together, started like writing with like a document, like a rough draft sort of thing yeah. for our final. And then on the last week, we kind of just grinded it out. It was it was fun to see us all like at your house, like twenty four seven, and like just like we literally were like twenty four seven at your house, going all yeah. night working on like our research and doing everything like that. So. Yeah, and it was like it was super like stressful. I think 
I think we definitely learned a big lesson from this because we procrastinated this competition so much. Yeah. I just like, yeah. imagine if we worked on this two hours every day since the beginning. Yeah. Like that's like three months of yeah, like could, work, two hours was, a day. Yeah. That was another, yeah. It was definitely like a mistake. Like we realized that we should have mm -hmm. put more time every day into this competition because this competition was like really big and like there were 5,000 teams participating which like is across only, the globe and yeah. only 10 would qual qualify for semi-final that was so. 20 or what is it was it 20 yeah it was, it's something like it's like a very low number but yeah and so but like, i mean it was a really good learning experience yeah, i learned like great so much yeah very and good so learning experience if it you guys us, oh sorry no my bad no if you guys found this interesting i would for sure like next year check it out yeah and see if you guys would want sure. like would want to do it because like we learned a ton from it mm -hmm. and like like, I don't know, like, a ton about, like, investing in the right. stock market, but I, I learned and I, you know, can still compile research on it, even if I'm not yeah. doing the, the actual investing since you're not using real money. But yeah. I think it's a great learning experience for anyone who's interested in this. And along with that, you don't have to know really anything about investing going into it because Wharton, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but Wharton, yeah, they provided, like, learning mm. resources and materials yes. that yeah. we all read up on. And, I, yeah, I learned a lot from those. So even if you don't know anything about like investing which i kind of didn't at the beginning uh i still like learned a lot in the end and so it was just awesome experience but yeah uh, when you grow up you have to invest in the stock market like somehow it's just like eventually yeah yeah eventually it's 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 like essential part for planning for retirement and for like becoming like successful like you yeah, know, become yeah financially like, free financially right, right, free right. like just having like a stable stable like a nest egg you kind of have to like invest you have to invest somehow in like companies yeah, and stuff. Yeah, even if it's not a lot, just like like yeah. hundred dollars a month, like more yeah. than that. Like like even at our age, we can still afford to do mm -hmm. fifty to hundred dollars a month. So, I think it's just really important when you're older, and even now at our Very age, now, like yeah. to always be thinking about investing at some point in your life. Yeah, so I think this competition like really taught us like how to like research companies and how to like look at investing differently. Yeah, right? because and before I think. I You're, think I looked at at least I looked at investing as just like money, 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 money. But I also have to look within myself and look at my own values and stuff and like what I believe mm. and support the companies that also are working towards like my beliefs and like my values. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, yeah, like it like helped me look at investing differently. I guess like critical awesome. thinking. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think this competition also taught us a lot about like. How investing, I mean, yeah, how like investing in stock market can like set up your whole future. Because this guy, Peter, mm -hmm. like he wanted to buy a yoga studio in, in Miami for millions of dollars. Yeah. And in 15 years, if we planned it right and if things went to court, like, and he, he wanted mm. to, you know, use investing to save that money. That so it just sense. shows how, like, even if you're not investing a ton of money, you're still like, it could still set you up for future plans you might want to do, whether that's buy a company, you know, buy a yoga, yoga studio if you want. Just, I think this shows how, like, it can set you up to be, like, wealthier in the future, which I think would be right. cool. Right. Cool. So, wait, okay. would you guys like to talk about, like, your investing? Like, how how are you guys investing right now? Right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, do you want me to go first, man? Yeah, you got it, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so... All of us have our Roth IRAs that we yep. invest in monthly, right? Yep. Oh, and you know what we should start doing? Definitely. We should both. We should all get on each other's butts about investing monthly and regularly. Uh, so but anyways, so yeah, so in our Roth IRAs, I think I contribute. I think it's like something small. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. I think I can't really do a lot right now, but <laughs> yeah. <same. laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, my my situation with my investing right now is I kind of realized like at our young age I feel like personally that we should I should be taking risks. And investing for me right now is kind of like the safest bet. I don't know, it's like, kind of like slow and like safe I guess, but I I I honestly yeah, I do understand that you can't make a million dollars overnight. There's no fast money. There's no like get rich quick. Mm -hmm. But I feel like at my young age, I think it's like important also to take risks and to like 
uh, experience things in life because at my young age, if I lose a lot of money, it doesn't, it's not it, really it's like, well, affect so you. So what? Yeah. <laughs> because I'll just make it back. Yeah. And like the amount of my money I have right now, if I lose it, it's not, it's not going to like, sig- it's not going to be significant. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not going to impact my family. It's not going to impact yeah. like a yeah, lot of factors my life. that happen yeah. when you grow older. Yeah. Like he's still like making like his, like parents are buying, like still like can pay for you and like have, and like, what like seven hundred dollars? Like if you lose all that, that's probably that's not like ten years of your savings. Yeah, it's probably like four months, five months of like actual like hard work, right? Yes. Yeah, so and so I mean, it sucks, but like when you're thirty five, forty five, and you throw in fifty thousand dollars to Bitcoin, like that is a lot riskier than mm-hmm. throwing you know seven hundred dollars at the age of 17 yeah i think just like at my age i just need to embrace failure and just try to do as many things as possible and try to like fail as much as possible so i can learn and become the best i can and so right now i think i'm just gonna like start doing like side hustles and stuff to try to make a lot of money because i also realized with investing is you kind of need a lot of money to make a lot of money because if you invest like what five hundred dollars you can have like like a 10% return or something. Honestly, I don't know how much that is. But that's like, that's not as much as if you invest, let's say for say like $50,000. Yeah. And then you have that growing at like 10, 10%, then that's like uh, so much money compounded at the end of yeah, like five years sure. compared to just like $500 comp- uh, compounded. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? So yeah, I've just been trying to do the same thing. Just dedicate a little bit of my like jobly income to my Roth area. But I haven't actually been like doing like kind of what Reagan does is like stocks and like specific like single stock. I don't really do that. I kind of just do as Zion's doing just some yeah. little Roth IRA type stuff. But and oh and I forgot to mention like just NP uh I almost said NPC. S and P F five hundred and V O O like Vanguard. Like ETFs. Just ETFs. Yeah. Yeah. ETFs. Just like the basket of stocks just spreading out your risk. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think we've covered that covered that also yeah, in, we have, in so. a previous episode, yeah. But yeah, so just that's kind of update. Oh, and also an update of recent activities. We all applied to Warts and Summer Camp again. Yes, yeah, so we're all doing different uh, ones. I think, or no, we're all doing yeah, the same ones. All, me and Finn are doing entrepreneurship. You're doing uh, LBW. LBW leadership, leadership in the business world. Finn also applied to the leadership in the business world, but we've heard it's really hard to get in. Yeah. So we're gonna just like see what happens. Oh, I also applied to entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so if I don't get into LBW, hopefully we'll entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship accepts me. Yeah. We'll be going out on the trip together, bro. Yo, oh, that'd be so sick. We all, we all, <laughs> yeah. Playing right. Oh. We all got, got the same session and dates, so. Thanks, How many people per bunk, bro? How many people per room? Like two. You get a roommate. Shoot. Thanks. Do you get to choose it or not? Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Shoot, bro. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We get accepted. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's, that's the goal. We'll keep so, you guys yeah. Updated on we'll that. keep you guys updated on that for sure. Cool. And we'll I keep you guys it. updated on our future endeavors and our, like, cool. things that we're working on right now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. If you've made it this far, we'd like to thank you. And hopefully you got something out of this episode. Maybe you guys are inspired to do Warts Investment Competition this year or next time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. But thank you, guys. Um, if you guys haven't followed our social medias, go do that in the description down below. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or concerns and suggestions for future videos, you can also put them down in the comments below or you can email us at nayamillionaires at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah, smash that like button and we'll see you in the next episode. See you, see you guys. next time.